Hi, in this video we are going to quickly see about coronary circulation. So this has been asked previously in many university questions as a 5 mark essay. Like what are the special features of coronary circulation, explain the salient features of coronary circulation, describe the peculiarities, what are the functional features. So basically in all these questions we are asking the special features of coronary circulation. So we can see how to approach this question for the exam. So when such a question is asked you can first write a, a very short uh, physiological anatomy or you may just depict it as a diagram. So, so for that you can draw the outline of the heart and then you can draw the vessels that are supplying the heart that is the coronary arteries. So first we've got the left coronary arteries the branches of which are the circumflex artery and also the anterior descending and the marginal branch. Next we've got the right coronary artery and the branches of right coronary artery are the posterior descending branch as well as a marginal branch. So you can draw this diagram to show what are the arteries present in coronary circulation. So coronary arteries are the first arterial branches to arise from the aorta. The left coronary artery supplies mainly the anterior and the left lateral position of the left ventricle and the right coronary artery supplies most of the right ventricle as well as the posterior part of the left ventricle. So that, that would be enough, you know, you not elaborate more on the branches and all as you would have done in anatomy. In physiology, you just have to write about the physiological anatomy. Next, we have to write about the normal range. What is the normal blood flow through the coronary arteries? So normally it is 70 ml per minute per 100 gram of heart weight or 225 ml per minute. You, I think it would be good if you can remember this value 225 ml per minute. That is around 4 to 5 percentage of the total cardiac output. Okay. So now moving on to the special features. What makes coronary circulation so special? So the first one is phasic blood flow. What is meant by phasic blood flow? See the coronary blood flow decreases during systole whereas increases during diastole. Why does it decrease during systole? See mostly when the heart pumps out blood, the organs receive more blood, right? But for the heart during systole it receives lesser blood supply, right? That is because the coronary vessels will be mechanically compressed during systole due to the contraction of the ventricular muscles. Okay, so the muscles while they contract they will compress these coronary vessels so that the blood supply to the heart will be momentarily decreased. So you can depict this by a graph. So on the y axis you can draw the coronary blood flow. So we know that it is around 225, right? So you can draw from 0 to 300 and mark, mark 100 and 200 in between. And then on the x axis you can uh, depict the time. So, based on the duration of systole and diastole, you can uh, segment that x-axis into two. So, this smaller part is for, this part is, depicts the systole, whereas this wider region depicts the diastole. So, now you can draw the graph to depict the coronary blood flow. So, you can see that during systole, the blood flow decreases from 225, it decreases to less than 100. And then, whereas during the diastole, it increases to nearly 300, right? And then again the cycle repeats. During the next systole again the blood flow decreases and in the next systole again the blood flow increases. So this is called the phasic blood flow of coronary, uh, coronary arteries. Okay. Now the next point is there is a special arrangement of coronary vessels at different depths of the heart muscle. So for example the coronary arteries we know it uh, divides into capillary arterioles and capillaries and all. So the surface of the outermost capillaries are called the epicardial coronary arterioles, right? And this in turn will pierce through that ventricular muscle, uh, blood supplies blood to the muscles and then we've got the subendocardial arteries. So see, during diastole what happens? The blood flows through this uh, intramuscular arteries and reaches subendocardial arteries, right? So what, what will happen when there is contraction of the ventricular muscles? Obviously, these intramuscular arteries, arterioles will be compressed and there will be no blood flow in this subendocardial region. Okay, so this special arrangement of coronary vessels is one reason, again one reason why we can have decreased blood flow to the heart during systole. So during systole, the blood flow through the subendocardial plexus of the left ventricle tends to be reduced. And this specular difference between the blood flow in the epicardial and endocardial arteries plays an important role in certain types of coronary ischemias. See, from these two points, that is phasic blood flow as well as by the special arrangement, we know one thing, 
that during systole the sub endocardial region of a heart has got less blood supply it is because of this that we've got infarct mainly in the sub endocardial region what is meant by infarct or ischemia ischemia means decreased blood flow and infarct means the death of the tissue due to decrease in blood flow so these two features of coronary circulation is a cause for in ischemia or infarct so now we will see the special features by which the coronary circulation will overcome this problem that is this problem that this during systole there is decreased blood flow okay so the first one is the myocardium has high capillary density okay so for each cardiac myocyte we've got a high capillary ratio so high capillary to cardiac myocyte ratio so that even though the blood supply decreases it will be able to catch or extract maximum oxygen that is possible next is short diffusion distance that is the diffusion distance between the blood vessel and the cell is very less so that the cell can get oxygen in a very short time moreover so this arrangement that is high capillary and short diffusion dif uh, distance ensures that there is adequate oxygen delivery to the myocytes and removal of metabolic waste products so this is one mechanism by which the coronary circulation tries to overcome that decrease in blood flow during systole so the next feature is the arterial venous oxygen difference is very high in heart even at rest that means arterial venous oxygen difference means in the veins there are where there is less oxygen when compared to arteries so the these coronary cells or so the heart cells can extract or the heart tissue can extract oxygen from this arteries so around 80% of the oxygen from the arterial blood is extracted into the heart tissue okay so what about other tissues see our average arterial venous oxygen difference is only 5 ml per 100 ml in normal organs but in the heart it is around 13 ml per 100 ml that means it extracts a lot of oxygen as the blood passes through these tissues so that again helps the cells to receive adequate oxygen so what about see we now we know that during systole the blood flow is decreased right but the heart has got many mechanisms by which it can utilize oxygen in a very short time but now my next question is what will happen if we've got Uh, an increased cardiac activity how what will happen if we exercise will we have an infarct will we have an ischemia no for that also we've got some special features we'll see what they are so the first one is it exhibit auto regulation see the coronary blood flow remains unchanged between a mean arterial pressure of 60 to 140 and the mechanism is called the myogenic theory so suppose there is an increased bp what will happen what do we think we think that yeah the blood flow through the coronary vessels will increase right but the coronary vessels have got a mechanism by which the flow can remain constant how is it so see when there's an increased blood pressure the arterial smooth muscle stretches right because of the increased flow this will cause opening of mechanically gated calcium channels okay and we know that whenever the calcium in channels open there will be calcium influx and this will cause contraction of the smooth muscle of the arterioles So now what happened there is contraction of the smooth muscle which means there's a decrease in diameter and increase resistance to flow so that the blood flow remains constant even though the blood pressure increases what about of when there's a fall in bp the opposite happens right so thus the coronary circulation is intelligent enough to change its blood flow depending on the need okay so another special feature of coronary blood flow is that it can adjust itself according to the metabolic need of the myocardium so suppose we are doing an exercise or suppose there's an increased cardiac activity what will happen the coronary blood flow will also increase almost in direct proportion to any additional metabolic consumption of oxygen by the heart so how does it does so we'll see so when there's an increased cardiac activity there will be increased oxygen utilization right this will cause a decrease in oxygen levels So what will happen? The muscle cells will release many vasodilator substances like adenosine, potassium, hydrogen, nitric oxide, and all. And these vasodilator substances will dilate the arterioles, which in turn will increase the blood flow. So that is why, even though there is an increased cardiac activity, even though we are exercising, or even though we need a increased metabolic need for the myocardium, is easily met by the coronary blood flow because of this vasodilator mechanism. Okay. so that's again another special feature of coronary blood flow 
the next special feature is that our coronary blood flow has got an adequate reserve so see unlike our cerebral circulation significant alteration occurs in the coronary blood flow depending on the cardiac activities so the coronary blood flow knows or the coronary circulation knows how to increase its flow depending on the need of the heart so the coronary blood flow can be increased up to around 4 to 5 fold to meet the heart's more oxygen need during exercise and thus we say we've got an adequate coronary blood flow reserve so these are the different uh, mechanisms by which our coronary circulation can overcome this decrease in oxygen, especially during systole, right? Now, uh, another special feature is that the major source of energy supply is free fatty acids. See, we usually think that carbohydrate is a major source of energy for most of the tissues. But for here, it is the most important source of energy supply is free fatty acids. So under resting conditions, cardiac muscle normally consumes more fatty acids than carbohydrates to supply its energy. That means around 70% of the energy is derived from fatty acids. Okay. And another feature of coronary circulation is that it has one of the shortest circulation times in the body being around 8 seconds. So see, we've got a very efficient coronary circulation because it's got a shortest time, the shortest uh, diffusion distance, whereas maximum extraction of oxygen. Okay. In spite of all this, we still have infrax, we still have ischemia. Why is it so? See, that is because coronary arteries are end arteries. Okay, what, is my, what does it mean by end arteries? Which means that coronary arteries do not have much anastomosis in between. Okay, so that is why when we've got a small block, it will cause ischemia. Because when there is block, the coronary arteries cannot compensate for that decrease in blood flow during the systole. Okay, so that is why we've got ischemia. However, if it is a progressive ischemia, coronary arteries can uh, result in angiogenesis and formation of collaterals. So if, if the block or the, the, the atherosclerosis is developing slowly, then the coronary arteries can stimulate angiogenesis and production of collaterals by means of various factors. Okay, so these are the special features of coronary circulation. You can finish off your answer by writing a very important clinical aspect which is coronary artery disease. So we know that coronary artery disease is a major problem especially in men of all age groups now. Right? So uh, you can write two aspects of coronary artery disease. First one is angina pectoris which is basically the pain in the chest region. Angina means pain, pectoris means the chest region and is mainly due to coronary vasospasm. Okay, so when there is a coronary vasospasm the blood supply to that tissue will be momentarily decreased and this can cause chest pain. And another applied aspect is myocardial infraction. So in infraction, there is an atherosclerosis which is going to occlude or that it can cause a total blockage of blood flow to the tissue which in turn will cause infraction or death of the tissue due to ischemia. So these are the important clinical aspects. Another point you can write is that the left anterior descending artery is called the widow's artery because this uh, myocardial infraction is more common due to left anterior uh, descending coronary artery occlusion. Okay, so you can finish off answer finish off your answer by writing this clinical aspect. So to summarize, when a question like special features of coronary circulation is asked, first of all you can draw the diagram of the coronary circulation and then you can write around 10 points which are first about the phasic flow of blood and draw the graph. Second about the special arrangement of the coronary vessels and draw the diagram. Third, that the myocardium has got high capillary density. Uh, there you have to mention about how it has the shortest diffusion distance also. And then that the arteriovenous oxygen difference is very high in heart even at rest. And that it exhibits autoregulation. What is autoregulation? I said it is called the myogenic theory. Right? And then you can write about that uh, the coronary blood flow can adjust the needs according to the metabolism of the myocardium and draw the flow chart. And then that it has got an adequate coronary blood reserve. The major source of energy supply is free fatty acids. And that has got the shortest circulation time. And finally that they are end arteries. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.